Hello uh, and welcome to another vlog. For some reason it seems like a long time since I've done one of these but you know just skip one week as is what I'm doing at the moment. Um, yeah so this is week commencing 20th of December so last week before Christmas um, and I'm not going to work between Christmas and New Year because it's just dead because a lot of businesses are shut. Most work on the CX is business to business uh all building sites won't be working all that kind of stuff so for me it's just not worth working christmas and new year start again on the first normal working day in the new year that's my plan um so last week on the run um i said before i'm not going to work christmas eve because christmas eve is kind of like dies off um totally um and then i and that's how i understand it anyway and then i want to get home to visit with family in Wales which I'm going for Christmas so uh, yeah and the garage the, this van's actually in the garage on Friday again yet again because I booked it in last Monday Monday last week so I only did four days last week uh, well four and a half because Monday was in the garage all day and then Friday morning I had to go and get the windscreen replaced so I didn't start looking for jobs till about half ten on the Friday so yeah I wasn't it was alright, did alright last week in terms of takings for the amount of time I worked, but obviously it was the work, it was like kind of like three and a half days on the run or maybe slightly more. Um, and then this week, like I say, I'm not working Friday, today is actually Tuesday. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't work yesterday, Monday. I hadn't had my jab, my booster jab, and I kind of thought when I woke up, if I don't get it this week, it's going to be Christmas then, and ideally I want to get it before going visit my parents and stuff. Um, give it a bit of time to uh, do what it needs to do. So I uh, looked online, there was a walk-in centre, went and got it, got it at a walk-in centre. It wasn't too much of a queue and stuff, but by the time I got it, it was like late morning. Um, I just thought, yeah, stuff it, I'll just, too late to start now. So what can I do with the rest of the day to make it productive? So I finished off doing my Christmas shopping pop to the bank to do something I needed to do and yeah I took the day off obviously I had a booster and last time it kind of made me a bit maybe not fluey but heavy cold so I'll have the rest of the day off and take it quite easy but Tuesday today back on it um yeah so before I go into what's happened so far this week fuel prices so my shell card which is the shell card I get through UK fuels um that's 115.73 and the BWOC or block card, which is a Roam card, control for diesel or C4D, uses the key fuels network. It's 114.55 plus the VAT, of course, which comes out at 137.46 um, for the block card. So I'm going to be using the block card this week because um, it is cheaper and it's enough of a saving for me to use that even though it's slightly less convenient to use than the shell card which I've gone into before and um, so last time I filmed a vlog two weeks ago the price was 135 pence bang on including VAT so it's gone up two and a half pence it went up yes last week and it's gone up marginally since last week so it had dropped off the fuel price but then it's kind of gone back up so it's still a bit cheaper than it was at its recent crazy high peak but it's still not gone back to where it was like September was it late September when it was 106 plus the VAT or something so yeah fuel's still expensive so like I say yeah that's the fuel price doing three days on a run this week um, started looking for jobs today about 10 past 9 um, I had the hope to start looking jobs earlier but hey ho um, staying at home got a job after just about an hour um, it was a small van job picking up central Birmingham B6 which is kind of Aston area like not just south of the Spaghetti Junction really that sort of area um, between there and proper centre of Birmingham a um, bit surprised to get this one what well, kind of yes and no it was picking up there one drop in Welsh pool I thought well it's a chance to go to Wellsport because I don't know when we go to that part of the world. Um, and then dropping in Manchester. So that would be an interesting drive. Um, 
So I've held it 138, which including the getting their miles was a shade over 85 pence a mile all miles. Um, so it's 151 miles loaded for 138 quid. This ship, I've done a few jobs for them before, but I don't think they're fantastic payers. Um, I've got the odd job off them, and it's picking up from their headquarters, their like offices, which I picked up from once before. Um, and it was Christmas gifts from them, from the shipper, obviously to some of their clients. First one was something to do with timber, in like I think it was just their offices in Welshpool. And then the second one was look to some kind of um, medical lab. So that was quite good. I should have should have had a Santa hat really for today's that job, but just got my little beanie. Um, so that was that job. And then I was parked in a car park at a place, but I'll check the feed before I move on. After you know uploading the invoice and so like uploading the pod and creating the invoice. Um, bid on a couple of jobs. One was going to picking up like less than two miles from where I was. Small van job again. Going to Grimsby, and I thought, well, not many people want to go to Grimsby, but really close to it. 113 miles. If I quote 108 quid, and I quoted for it, rang me up and gave me it straight away. Um, and it was picking up one envelope, one A4 envelope from a bank, one of the big banks, one of their offices in Manchester. So, not like a branch of the bank but like their offices um, from the mail room um, did think this could be a pain where I'm going to pack but it actually worked out really easy um, and then uh, actually went a different way it was showing the M62 on the CX but going via I think it's Snake Pass is it in Rotherham, Rotherham was like pretty much the same time with two or three minutes slower but like Six miles short, 107 miles. So it turned out 108 miles for 108 miles all, 108 pounds for 109 miles all miles. Small van job. So that worked out right. Two, four, six for the day. Did pretty good because then slightly late start and getting going. Um, pounds, pence per miles, pretty good. Just shy of a pound, is it? Something like that. E, no, it's not. 91.8 it is for today. I did work it out. But still pretty decent. Um, and then tomorrow, so I'm in Grimsby now. Nothing has come up in this area since I got here. Um, not the busiest of area, but fingers crossed for the morning. I've always done okay when I've come down this part of the world. Um, and I'm still quite flexible because it's Wednesday tomorrow and I need to be home for Thursday. I've noticed. There are less jobs in general in the evenings than there was like several months ago. During COVID, there was loads of COVID jobs, normally with the same shipper or a couple of shippers. And they like there were loads of jobs then picking up in the evening, late afternoon or evening, and going straight to a test centre and COVID samples. That seems to have stopped now. It stopped a, a fair while ago. I started to taper down and now it's gone. And I think that's partly why the CX seems a lot quieter. Um, so a lot of them jobs kind of save me. Sort of like before when it was really quiet due to COVID. Because I was doing late night small land jobs for good money. Um, they've gone away now. So it's just more the usual stuff. Um, yeah. See how I get on tomorrow. Right. Wednesday evening now. Uh, just after 10. Um, excuse me. So, yeah, this morning, woke up in Grimsby. So I started looking for jobs about half seven. I'd left the app on overnight. No jobs had come up overnight. Job, I don't think a job came up until about half eight um, within my catchment area. And I actually increased it from 30 miles uh, to 40 or 45, so I was kind of covering skeg nests and stuff and further down the coast, but not just kind of taking some Doncaster just to see how much jobs are coming up in that area because I knew it was going to be quiet. So 
you have to change that setting on the desktop version, not on the app. I access the desktop version on my phone, just on Google Chrome or whatever. Anyway, yeah, um, been on a few jobs, which I didn't win, but it was some of the jobs coming up were local. Like one came up Grimsby, but going to Hull, and I thought, well, if I take that. Um, I looked on who's around me. I was like the only guy in Grimsby um, at that time. A few turned up later, but in Hull there's like loads of drivers, so I thought I could take you know a probably not much more of a minimum charge job, and it's going to get me to Hull, and there'll be loads of competition. Not a lot really comes out of Hull anyway, so thought I'm better off staying where I am. I can feel like a longer job out of the area. Then a job had pinged up in Retford, small van with eight stops all over the north. First drop in Sheffield, and then like all over the northwest. Um, and then the last drop in Wrexham, and I thought, well, I'm too far from that. So like over an hour from it. And then it got posted again, so I thought, okay, maybe they're sell it, struggling to sell it. So I could get it covered. So I bid on it, short, small van job. It's 191 miles in total, eight drops, small van, quote 225. I got it, the only problem was I was like 51 miles from it. It still worked out over 90 pence a mile, um, all miles, but obviously it's quite a lot of drops. So, yeah, they rang up and gave, gave it me, not straight away, like maybe 20 minutes after I bid. Um, to one of them where like, the phone rings and you're thinking, who could that be? Uh, he totally forgot about the job. Um, yeah, anyway, got it, went and picked it up from some transport company. Um, the address was, it was just like a small industrial estate unit and I think it was a bit of a morgue because it was like a big, what looked like a fridge, a walk-in type fridge, loads of coffins and the things I were delivering were ashes. I've done ashes before, but it's been like one collection, one drop. Um, this is one collection and eight drops, so kind of multi-drop, I suppose by definition. Um, and it, was, it said in the notes eight drops but it had nine addresses and the first address I had on my list in Sheffield she said somebody had already taken that one of the other drivers um, but she had in her pile another drop which she thought I was taking as with the rest of them which was a NG postcode like Nottingham which is like quite far south really so yeah, I said to her, that's not on my list. Um, it says eight drops and I've got nine addresses. So I'm thinking maybe that first one in Sheffield is just an error. Um, yeah, and I said to her, you know, if I do NG, it's quite far south and gonna be quite hard push to get these done in, anyway. So that's not really, doesn't really fit in with the rest of them. The NG postcode. Um, and it took me till just after six anyways it turned out to get them done so yeah glad I didn't take that one so I left with the eight um, and then I rang the shipper before I like left the industrial estate and told them what happened and she says oh yeah just crack on uh, we'll try and sort it out something obviously gone wrong so didn't really save many miles not doing a Sheffield one so I drove right past Sheffield anyway and then over the Pennines down this horse no, the snake passes it or something really picturesque Quite a nice drive, um, dropping Duckinfield and Oldham, Blackburn area, Leyland, outskirts of Liverpool, through the Mersey Tunnel, on one on a Wirral, and then the last one, like I say, in Wrexham. So I tipped just after six. So I was probably on this job just over eight hours, 225 quid. So it's hourly rate wise, it's not. Fantastic. Um, mileage wise, it was like say over 90p a mile. It was like 96p a mile, well, actually, it worked out. Um, some, anyway, pretty good. Um, sorry, no, 96 pence a mile included the later job. It was definitely like low and lowish 90s for the whole job, our first job. I put in Wrexham, went and got some uh, fried rice. Um, last fried rice of the year, probably, hopefully, from the Chinese, and then I thought that's it for the day. And then a job had pinged up, picking up from Rex and that L13. Small van job said documents going down to by Portsmouth, but 
picking up like half five in the morning. I thought, wow, well, don't really want to get down to Portsmouth tomorrow, but forget it. No, let's pick up at seven, it was. But if I pick it up at seven, it's going to be tipping like half, half eleven ish, probably. Gives me a bit of time to try and get back to the Midlands. Because tomorrow is my last day. Van's in the garage, like I said, on Friday. Um, so tomorrow is my get home day. Um, so I bid on it, but I bid pretty high. I bid pretty much a pound loaded mile. There's only four miles from it. Um, and then that was still on there and then I noticed another job had pinged up with the same shipper, same collection address for tonight, picking up ASAP pretty much within the hour and taking it to Warrington um, I was 4 miles from it again 35 miles loaded or maybe from this call it 40 miles all in so I quoted 50 quid phone rings straight away, says oh yeah you're still available, I'll send that through um, well, great that kind of makes my money up for the day gets me over target um, and it's gonna be like 40 miles 50 quid for 40 miles so yeah that's not bad for a late job just boost the earnings a little bit that'll be worth doing great um, it turned out to be one of his annoying jobs comes through and it's not four miles anymore to collection it's 12 still LL 13 and the job isn't 35 and a bit miles, it's 41. So there's an extra, say, five, six miles on the job itself loaded, plus another eight miles, should be in four, so it's gone up threefold to 12. So that's like an extra 13, 14 miles on the job. And this, I've just mentioned it before, this is one of my like pet hates when shippers do this. They don't put the addresses in properly when they put it out for quotes. Or they do it, maybe it's sharp practice, maybe it's, you know, they do it that way so it looks like less of a job. I think more often than not, it's just, they don't, they just put like the first part of the postcode in. So maybe they put LL13 in and then the system works out where the middle of LL13 is. And then when they come to actually do the job, they put the proper address in and it's, you know, it's further away. It's not where it's, where you've quoted on. So in this case it may be longer to the collection and the job longer and it was only a small job anyway so 40 miles it's gone up to like 52 it's like over 25 percent increase isn't it so on a smaller job you notice it more um so if you're not on the cx or you know or even if you are you'll know you'll know like this job said wrexham l 13 so it'll only say the first part of the postcode even if they've put the full postcode in and I think the reason why they do that is because they don't want people to look at it and say right oh that's the full postcode google that postcode look at the companies around that area or it might only be one company and go all right they're the daily couriers I'll go and drop my car there if you're looking for your own customers so you're not actually done a job you're not poaching but you're getting a lead on people are using couriers I think that's why the CX do it Every now and then you'll see a job with a full postcode, so maybe the shippers can override it for some reason. I don't know, that's just me sort of guessing and educated guess, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, when they don't put it in properly, it kind of gets annoying. So I thought, well, do I do? Do I ring her up and say this job's changed? I thought, well, it's still 50 quid for 51, 52 miles, maybe. It's not worth a hassle, just go and just collect it and do it. Still bit of extra money get me over target and it got me from Wrexham which isn't a terrible area but not a brilliant area to Warrington and Warrington for me is probably the per like one place I'd choose to perch in the whole of the UK but um, the reason there's a lot of um, distribution centres around here is very well connected you can pick up some here within half an hour for lots of like industrial estates and stuff so That'll be good for the morning, so I'm going to get up reasonably early tomorrow morning um, and then try and get you know a reasonable day tomorrow. I've worked out, I had a good day today I'm taking, just there was 155, today would have been a fair bit more. I've averaged over the two days on earnings, so my takings minus my costs, which is basically my profit, my wage. Is 340 for the two days, which is 170 a day on average. 
So I'm on ahead of schedule here so far this week, good couple of days. Um, which considering it's the week running up to Christmas where it normally gets eases off a bit. But I say it hasn't been mad, mad busy anyway. I'm pretty happy with that. And tomorrow is just get home to be honest. If I can get home without doing too many dead miles, I might just sack it in, sack it off and that's it to the new year, so it's not a normal week this week too much. I'm a bit more relaxed. Um, just see the year out and then uh, yeah, I'll start obviously chasing the targets more in the new year. But yeah, that is until the end of Wednesday until the end of day two of a three day week. Right. Thursday afternoon now and in daylight because yeah early finished day so yeah this morning started looking for jobs probably about 20 past seven um it's a good part of the world like i say probably my ideal place to perch warrington the feed was you know fairly busy but not as busy as i think it normally would i think you know because we're getting really into the run into christmas now it's probably affected it dropped down a bit um and has been quite selective so trying to get home so not looking for local jobs not looking for distance jobs going to well, if it's a distance job it needed to be sort of towards the west mids or like overshooting it so obviously looking to get home to Walsall so any jobs that came up to say like Northampton that sort of area I'd bid on Leicester Derby um, then down the M5 corridor say as far as Gloucester and stuff maybe so I'd bid on jobs that length early in the morning because I was thinking, right, if I get that job, then I've got time to get another job to get closer to home. Um, so I was bidding on them and also jobs to the West Midlands, um, like close to home. Didn't get anything for quite a while. Um, so I didn't get a job until about 2211. So, yeah, quite a long time. Um yeah, so over three hours, but just sat in Morrison's car park, um, or partly in Morrison's car park for most of some of it. And then um, when I did get a job, it pinged up from Manchester, Trafford Park, obviously a big sort of business industrial estate area close to Trafford Centre and Old Trafford and all that lot. Um, it's picking up from a sign place and going to Wensbury. Wensbury being very close to uh, home to Walsall, less than four miles from home, about 10 minutes. So got it, went and picked it up, like a 35 minute drive to collect it. 19 miles, 18 miles on a job. So that's 99 miles, call it 100. And I priced it at 85 pence, sorry, 85 pounds, which is 85 pence a mile, all miles. So, and it got me really close to home so it's a good job in that respect but got that tipped got there about quarter to two got it tipped and all the admin on the CX app done by two so finished at two today so quite early so I did look at the CX to see is there any other jobs and um, just get another local in maybe bring it up but I've just kind of as I suggest it's more just get home now it's not a proper week, week before Christmas, and I'm close to home, um, and knock it on the head. I did look, the place I delivered is signed to, three metre length, probably like one point, at least one and a half metres tall. It's only like thin plastic, um, printed sign. Was actually to the Amazon depot in Wensbury, um, where i done a fair bit of flex from over the last three or four years, like I said, I did one, don't do much in the van now. I did actually do one the end of last week because I was trying to stay local, um, which didn't go great, to be honest. Every time I do one, I think, why am I bothering with this? But every now and then it's a change. I used to do a fair bit from there for my car. Um, I had my car before I got the van and got on the CX and stuff. And I was looking, thinking, like half one and quarter to one blocks now are the ones that are Amazon standard delivery and they're the ones I've mentioned loads of times before you know it's like really bunched together you might go to a street and there'll be like multiple drops and you do a very small area and you're almost it's kind of like being more like a somewhere between a postman 
and the multi-drop delivery driver for the likes of say Yodel or whatever because the, the drops are closer together and it's pretty small stuff a lot of it is envelopes or like what they call book folders yeah it's not heavy work at all so I was kind of thinking if we could get one of them it would be ideal because I could get that tipped and then collect one because I'll be there anyway um, uh, obviously can't refresh the memory refresh the jobs when I'm driving but I did have a quick look when I stopped at the service station and before I head off um, and a few jobs did ping up quarter to three hour blocks quarter, starting at quarter to one and they were paying 66 quid so that's 22 pounds an hour so that's about as much as you'll see on an Amazon block um, normally that's when somebody's taken a job and then declined it and then it goes back on at a higher rate because they just want it covered um, it's like the way their system's set up I think um, but in reality if I got a three hour standard delivery block not a same day block which is more spaced out which is basically any other time that they come up in a day for a standard delivery for our block probably gonna get it done in an hour and a half including you know getting loaded maybe an hour and three quarters for 66 quid that would have turned up nice but I didn't get them so I'm gonna very quickly because it's gonna be a short one this week show you how the flex it's not really bidding you don't bid you don't put a price on it says a price and then you go for it yes or no um, but it's like first gets it and once it's gone it's gone so I'm going to show you quickly now how the flex app works for getting a job right so this is the Amazon flex app so when you go into it now you've got all these general news stuff so if I go to schedule see I've got I don't have any block scheduled for today or indeed for any time so if I go offers right so I've got my filter set at the moment just to show the Wednesday one so you can see you can set your availability like what times you want to pick blocks from I set it to just Wednesday because that's all I was interested in doing today so say I add Worcester Amazon logistics is um, parcels so where it says Morrison's is pretty obvious you know you're picking up from Morrison's doing food not worth doing that in the van I did some when I had a car even in the car it wasn't worth doing because if it says it's a two hour block it does take you two hours it's not like the parcels where you can get them quicker let's just say I'll turn a lot of these like Birmingham Amazon Logistics a new Amazon Logistics Stoke done that before plenty from Stoke Birmingham I haven't done that's new Birmingham B11 for ARE, that's another new one I've not done, but it's Amazon Logistics, so I'll turn it on. Banbury, I've done loads from there. Amazon Logistics. Romscove is Morrison's. Lutterworth, Amazon Logistics, another one that's new I haven't done any from, but I might as well turn it on. Morrison's, Morrison's, not worth doing. Birmingham, Amazon Logistics B6, so that's somewhere near Aston. Each way. Stoke, Birmingham, because there's loads of new ones. The only one in Birmingham used to be for parcels used to be Wensby, but now there's loads of excellent. So hit see results. There should be loads of jobs offers now. There you go. So got a job here, Amazon Logistics Birmingham B98. That's good mate, that £77 for three and a half hours, half two pickup. So I'm thinking that might be a standard delivery one, they probably from like half one or quarter to two that they haven't maybe sold. Not sure where B98 is, but anyway, and then three o'clock. See, uh, so 39 pounds for a three hour block that's pretty standard. So, what's that? 13 pounds an hour. I'd like I say, it should take less. And then you've got all these Banbury ones and stuff. Just go for there. Four, four hour 92 quid. See, Banbury they always struggle to get drivers from more than like around Birmingham, so you're going to get better rates sort of thing so a four hour same day block you probably are looking at least three hours to get it done but if it's 92 quid that's not bad is it and like i say it's light work but you will be delivering in the dark this time of year of course so anyway say i 
block pings up. Basically, if there's nothing you want there, you just keep hitting refresh. And it'll only refresh when you press down the bottom. And then you select it. And then you can, um, down the bottom, so that's click 230 till 6. So I'm not going to select that one because it's like within 45 minutes of pickup. So if I just go on really late, for a job for tomorrow even. So I'm going to select this Banbury one, use tomorrow. Down the bottom, swipe to schedule. If you watch this now when I swipe, it's going to say... You accepted a block in green, which means I've got it scheduled in. I'm expected to turn up and do it. If somebody else has got it before you, you'll get a red thing saying this block is no longer available. And it's not, you do have to be incredibly quick because to get the ones at Wensby, like I was refreshing, spent a few minutes doing it, and they popped up, select it, swipe like all within like a second, and somebody else has got it. It's that quick, it's gone. Um, so that's how it goes basically so i think sadly didn't get any of them jobs today so it didn't work out but anyway that's a bit well thing so well remember well i'm going to cancel that block now i'm not going to show you to do that because it'll give some of my personal information but anyway that is the flex block app thing right yeah, just to add about flex so say today i didn't get one but i was trying to get one at quarter to two, so 145. Um, if I had got one, and let's say before one o'clock, I've got until 45 minutes before the block starts to cancel it, so I just need to select it in my calendar, which is on the menu in the top left, and then forfeit block. So not decline block, but forfeit. I mentioned if somebody else has declined the block they already had booked previously earlier. But once you've got a block, you have to forfeit it. Um, so as long as you forfeit it 45 minutes before your scheduled start time, so say for a quarter, for a 1.45 block, as long as you forfeit it before 1, it doesn't count against you. If you do it less than that, you get a bad mark against you. And if you do that too many off times, Amazon just kick you off. It's like part of the, you know, it's, it's all in the system, it's all an algorithm. And... Good luck trying to get hold of someone to try and get that reversed because you just can't get hold of people with Amazon. They're like it's like the wrong work, so um, so you just kind of got to comply with it all. Um, I think as well, I've only ever fallen foul of that once and got one bad mark against me. I was going to Banbury to do one and in my car a long time ago. I was going to do two blocks in the run up to Christmas, I think it was. And there's a big delay on the way down on the M40, so I was going to be like 20 minutes late. If you're like five minutes late and you go in and speak to one of the guys there, I did this last Friday, they can sort you out. But if you're like 20 minutes late, don't even worth, don't even try, you know. So I got one bad mark against me before, but like I say, we do give you some leeway. Um, and the more you've done and the more reliable you are, the better your stats are, the more less likely they are to beat you off. Um, yeah, so that's that, and I've also heard you got like five minutes, I think it's five minutes, from when you book it. So say that I booked one now, we're collecting in 20 minutes time, and then I realised, oh no, I can't do it. I've got like, I think up, up to five minutes, but don't quote me on this, to cancel it. So it's either within 45 minutes of the start of your block, or within five minutes of booking it. The second one, second bit of that, I'm not 100% on that, but that's what somebody told me before. So that's forfeiting a block. In terms of collecting, so going back to a block at 145, I could could have gone in onto site, it would let me the app go in, and the people that get would let me go in a quarter of an hour early. So could in for such a block could go in at half one. Sometimes it's good because you go in and you're loaded, it takes like five to ten minutes to load and you, you can't diddy daddy because you're in a queue and if you're slow you can be holding people up behind you you do get people like that sometimes normally new people you just got to go in you scan the code on the cage for your route and that'll show you what you've got to collect and you have to scan each parcel individually so I did a three hour block 
from Wednesday last week, it was 31 drops, 32 parcels, so 32 parcels of scan, but like I said, it's all the right stuff. Small boxes, envelopes, these book folders they call them. Um, yeah, so, and you've allowed to be five minutes late. So for a 1.45, it'll allow you to still book in up until 1.50. Um, the one last week I was right on the verge when I got there, um, with being late, too late, and it didn't allow me to, to um, say I was on site. It's all in the app. When you get there, you've got to hit, I am on site, and then once, once you're there, happy days. Um, you just got to queue up, follow instructions, and get your parcels. So anyway, that's Amazon Flex, a bit more on that. So that was it for today. Um, there are crop blocks from there later this afternoon, but it's like a two hour wait. Am I going to wait two hours? And then it's going to be a same day, which means you're driving between every one. Um, and the three hour block I did last week did actually take me about two hours 25 from leaving the depot. So probably two hours 35, including maybe even two hours 40. And I got like a campaign, which I got for that, maybe 51 quid or something it was. It's not worth it in the end, doing the same day. I'm doing it in a van like this, it's no fun. It's kind of designed for Amazon Flex for doing it in a car because you don't need a lot of storage space. In your car, it's easy to you know, nip in and out of streets, get turns around. Doing it in a long wheelbase van, this isn't a good van for multi-drop because it's got a terrible turning circle. And you know, you just better in a car for that kind of work or a small van. Anyway, yeah, that's Flex. Didn't do anything else today. Not a full day today. Late getting the first job, but finished about two. Not far from home. Christmas Eve tomorrow, so it's Christmas Eve Eve today. So that's it for the year. End of. So 2021 is done in terms of um, work, unless something happens. But can't see me doing any more work now until January. So. I'm just going to go briefly through my numbers. Well, I'm not really going to go through properly. So I did three day, three and a half days, call it. Two and a half days, even. So Monday was a day off for the booster and Christmas shopping. Tuesday, two jobs, one for eight, 98, which is 246. Then Wednesday, the best day yesterday, two jobs, 225 and 50, 275. Worth mentioning them first two days, the four jobs I did were all small land jobs. Um, and I was on like over 90 pence a mile, all mile. Admittedly, one of them was did have eight drops. Today, Thursday, was the only long wheelbase job. I did one job, 85 quid, um, and that was a really light load. One sign, plastic sign. Um, so that was it. And then tomorrow, I say text some CVs, so I'm not going to bother working anyway because XMC will totally die off, I think. Um, and the van is in the garage. I didn't mention it earlier. The van was in the garage last week and it was a complete waste of a day because it was there until like mid afternoon. I got a call saying oh, it was in to get an intercooler pipe that goes from the turbo or turbos because it's got two on this to the intercooler at the front, you know, below the radiator where it joins onto the intercooler was loose and there was oil leaking from it. There shouldn't be that much oil in there anyway, um, but they're going to. They said they replace it because it's obviously loose and leaking. If it's leaking oil, if it's not oil tight. It's definitely not, you know, pressurized air tight. Because I'll pressurized air from the turbo. Um, and basically, they said the part wrong part had turned up, and this part had to be ordered from Europe. Apparently, big st st all the spares are stored in Amsterdam or something. So it's like a bit of lead time on it. So, did the wrong part turn up or did they order it? I reckon it's more likely they've ordered the wrong one myself because it's all part numbers, isn't it? So, if they've ordered, it might be, it might not be their fault, but I reckon more likely to be the dealer ordered the wrong one and just trying to shift the blame. Like I say, not impressed at all with the service from the local Nissan dealer, and it's the only one I can really take it in the area. Don't buy a Nissan van, buy a Renault version. As I said before, is my advice. So it's got to go in tomorrow anyway for the van, the 
pipe. I did get a phone call on Tuesday to say the van, the part hasn't turned up yet. We're expecting it by now. Um, we'll call you tomorrow and let you know if it's turned up or not, which was yesterday. They still haven't phoned, they didn't phone me yesterday, they still haven't phoned me today. So I'm going to ring up in a sec and ask them. So there's another crap service, isn't it? Like saying, oh, we're not sure the part's going to turn up, we'll let you know tomorrow. And it's like 36 hours later now and I've still not heard from them. It's just like absolutely shocking, really. Um, Anyway, um, so that is van update and week on the run figures. I'm not going to go and do the takings. That's my takings, sorry, I mentioned. I'm not going to do what my earnings are for the week. It's not a proper week. Today's a half-ish day, half-hearted. Half um, but obviously up until yesterday, the first two days averaged 170, which were proper days takings and today's obviously only 85 quid before deductions so yeah I'm not even gonna work it out but yeah not a proper week but yeah so that is the end of the week on the run um so i do want to briefly mention a few things about just 2021 in summary um been a very strange year obviously with covid so going back to january february we were in like a proper lockdown weren't we it was like the second major lockdown really through winter you know remember they started up before last christmas basically boris or the government had to basically cancel christmas since some people are saying but you know lots of strict um rules because of the covid situation that lagged into january february it started to pick up in march january february if you think back and go back to my vlogs like i was my takings for the week not my earnings but my takings were sometimes for a five-day week were like 650 to 700 quid which is obviously not enough after costs i wasn't earning enough then to for my you know living expenses for you know everything i've got just like living you know food living costs for you know spending any kind of like free income i didn't have any free income i wasn't earning enough to, to earn at that time but i kind of knew it was all down to the lockdown so i just had to sign a hold tight and earn what i could it started to pick up in march by april it's pretty decent again and then it ramped up through july august i would say were the best months in august it totally changed it was doing really well it was a shipper's market not a shipper's market which it had been it was actually a driver's market um, and I was winning probably one in two jobs could have sh probably should have put my prices up but I was kind of just happy with the money I was getting I was keeping busy earning decent money takings like the 170 180 plus I'll say earnings per day the best week I had was actually in September when it started to ease off a bit I think but I just had like a week where it all worked out well took out takings were over 1500 quid for five days and i worked out my earnings were like 210 pounds a day over five days so that was you know over a grand earnings so that's obviously what i would have paid kind of like my wage just tax and national insurance come out of that and then it's been disappointing since august really it's been got quieter and quiet and it kind of like plateaued maybe christmas has made it pick up a little bit but not a great deal um so i've still been last few weeks been able to average like a 150 pounds a day earnings so pre-tax earnings after costs but yeah so that is pretty much the way the year's gone um Bit disappointed in the run up to christmas i was kind of thinking in august i was thinking well if it's this busy now what's it going to be like in december late november december be like quids in well hey this is going to be great and i can't really work out what happened because this whole omicron didn't come along till quite a bit later definitely changed overnight into september something to do with the kids going back or maybe the end of furlough all sorts of stuff can't really say for sure I'm a bit concerned about what it's going to be like in January, February now. Hopefully it's not going to go back to where it was at that time last year because we won't be in lockdown, hopefully. Notice Omicron, who knows. Um, 
and I'm hoping it's not going to drop off too much from the Christmas because the lack of Christmas jobs going forward so I don't think it's really picked up much because of Christmas anyway so I'm hoping it's going to stay as it is now or maybe just get slightly slower that would be okay hope if it dies off it's going to be you know a bit of an issue um, but hopefully going into next year that's the short term forecast from me for or thoughts on the beginning part of the year January, February, March but hopefully from next year onwards we're going to really sort of move on from Covid now um, Covid era period whatever you want to call it and it'll kind of get back to where it was before Covid ever hit so like 2019 that's what I'm kind of hoping but I actually started on the CX February late February 2020 six weeks before the first Covid started to hit the news and stuff in China so I don't know the CX from normal times so I'm quite new to this uh, still still consider myself new even though I've done like 650 jobs in that time um, but yeah that's my thoughts on a week on, on sorry last the whole year and going forward interested to know your comments um, as ever put them in the comments below I still need to catch up on some comments so sorry I've been slack I'm definitely going to do that probably this weekend um, and then uh yeah, Merry Christmas, have a nice break, um, and then we'll see what next year brings.